Well, okay. What's well, coming? What's coming? In uh, January, for example, that was uh, those uh, snowmageddons, if you like. You had three of those or so in December, and these, these super cold whacks in January. We predicted those from the careful timing of the solar lunar effects and when they happened in the past, sometimes a number of times in the past, and then say, okay, so this message is on, and we can say when. Give or take a day or so. I mean, I suppose the super cold came a day or two earlier than we said, but, you know, it carried on, and it was pretty, you know, it was basically there when we said, in where we said as well. So um, we're pleased with that. And uh, I've just been thinking about your... People who listen to your show, and what we ought to do, I think, is we'll give um, a free extra forecasts for the next three days for anyone getting USA forecasts, and we'll put on the website. This is for Alex Jones Show listeners, but of course, anyone who gets on there will take advantage of it, but that doesn't matter. So for the next three days, we'll give people extra forecasts, so you, instead of buying one, you get two, you see. So when you pay for one month, you get two months. Well, it's certainly worth it, and we should probably try to even get you as a... Absolutely, but but in general, coming up because uh, you make these predictions each year on the oh, show. Right. Yes, what's coming up? Well, we have not yet done actually a detailed forecast for the uh, USA or Britain uh, for the coming uh, six months, but we are doing it and extending the time ahead. And uh, uh, what is obvious is that these. Uh, wild swings of the jet stream are going to continue. So it will mean uh, get another summer of dramatic contrast in, in the in the USA. So, you know, very hot, dry bits in places and uh, breaking down in other parts to, you, you know, severe uh, rain and, and cold bits. And a uh, similar type of um, contrast in, in, in Britain, although Britain is smaller, so it, it, it you know, uh, the variations across it might not be so large as they are across the US of A. But uh, a characteristic of last summer, for example, or a lot of, or even this, this winter, was we had um, quite warm in the southwest USA, uh, very warm at times, uh, as well as being very cold in the northeast. Now, this type of conflict will continue. I'm not saying it will be that contrast exactly, but that type of thing will continue. And that's because uh, the jet stream is, is, is moving wildly because the sun is doing what? Wildly down. And, and the sun is the main driver. Explain that to people. Yeah. The sun sending its particles out, uh, charged particles, uh, are captured by the various planets, one of them being the Earth, and uh, uh, they're magnetically connected to the sun. So when the magnetic connections are favorable, you get more of these particles. And the moon interrupting or not, the solar wind also, again, changes the number and effect of the particles. And these particles, they change the rate at which weather fronts operate. So when we have our R5 periods, they're called, that means red red action, red weather action period four, level five, it means that weather fronts are much more intense. And you can see that. In this very cold bit, um, uh, as it was warming up, we warned there will be tornadoes. Now, somebody emailed in and said, what tornadoes? And of course, they started at the start of this period. I said, well, just wait and see. And um, sure enough, there were tornadoes uh, at the end of that in various places as the, as the warm air met the cold air, uh, as, as, as we predicted. Well, I mean, the big uh, issue here is farmers going back thousands of years looked at how the sun was acting and how the moon was acting and, yeah, uh, you know, had lore about weather according to the sun and moon because they didn't know that the sun had basically these winds to boil mm -hmm. it down. And, and then when the moon got, you know, and, and then when the moon gets in front of the earth, uh, I mean, it's, it's more complex than that, but that obviously that's one of the main drivers of climate. But you talk to a mainline meteorologist, they'll tell you the sun has nothing to do with it. I mean, that's asinine. It's mental. It's mentally defective, frankly. You know, I mean, we ought to call the, the science of these so-called scientists what it is. It is mentally defective. It's cretin. It's cretinism. I mean, you know, the Vikings knew that when there was aurora, as sure as night follows day, storms will follow. And that always, that's always the case. You have big aurora, you will have big storms, especially in the northern hemisphere. And for those that don't know, that's when there's more radiation coming in from the sun, yes, causing an aurora right. borealis. I mean, everybody knows now that, that when you get a big solar flare that hits the Earth, 
it, it, it will produce nuclei, then you'll have a bunch of rain come out of a clear sky. It'll form clouds and you'll get rain. I mean, it's funny, the astrophysicists all know this. NASA knows this. But even their own scientists won't come out and say it. It's just That's ridiculous. Right. NASA knows it, but they won't, they won't say it. After all, who's paying them? I mean, they're on a government payroll, which is there to um, rob the public through, you know, carbon taxes, uh, subsidies to various uh, green, dodgy uh, operations and, uh, and so forth. So we have a, a lack of accountability in the state apparatus when that should be where we have accountability. And it's only when voters rise up and demand accountability from their politicians that we're going to get somewhere. I mean, you should vote out, chuck out the people that, that, that don't believe in accountability. Very well said, sir. Well, listen, I appreciate your time. Thank you. Uh, do we have any idea in this sun cycle? I mean, I mean, I know when you know the sun's doing something or going in a certain mm -hmm. cycle, you can predict with 90% or more accuracy what's going to happen. But, but generally, you know, the sun, we don't know, always acts the same. Yeah. yeah. Sorry, what's happening? Yeah, we around now with these this month and last month. Well, the early part of this month, we've had a lot of extra solar activity, which we predicted, and it came on time. I'm very pleased with that. The next few months, though, month or two, is going to be much quieter. There'll be much less solar activity, less aurora, which often favours. Um, cold weather and less active weather fronts. So there will be some more cold blasts in general, we can say without doing the detailed forecast, but that, you know, can't say for sure, for sure where. And uh, one thing we're pretty aware of already, though, is that the Olympics in, um, the Winter Olympics in Russia, they will be, uh, there will be a lot of very cold air there and cold snowy blasts, so they're not going to be uh, troubled by mild uh, air, which is Probably good news. What about the Olympics coming up that they're wanting to have out in the middle of the desert in the Middle East? Well, <laughs> I think that's insane by any measure. You, you know, it's just complete army insanity. I mean, it, there's a reason why people don't live there. I mean, it's because it's too damn hot. So, I mean, to run Olympics there is just, just completely stupid. It's some money-grabbing operation. Well, we are seeing more and more insane behavior. Thank you very much. <laughs> Thank you very much, uh, Pierce. You. All right, there he goes, the head of Weather Action, uh, the man who predicted uh, so much of what happened this winter. You can go back to the show last time he was on. I mean, it's amazing. It, it really is amazing. And like, like you said, the Vikings basically knew this stuff. When there's a big aurora borealis, that means they didn't know what was causing that, the northern lights. They thought it was Thor riding around his chariot. Uh, they just knew that that mean a bunch of weather was going to come the next few days because all that nuclei comes in, creates static electricity to boil it down to layman's terms that then allows water droplets to condense to make bigger droplets, clouds, rain, thunderstorms, snow. I mean, it's just, it's just the sun, folks. The, if it wasn't for the sun, the earth would be absolute zero, absolute zero, no life on it. But the UN says the sun has no effect on climate. I mean, that's like saying the sun has no effect on plants growing. I mean, and like you said, it is total mental illness, ladies and gentlemen. Total mental illness where they, I mean, they could come out and say the world's flat and people might believe it. I want to go to uh, Michael, who says he works at a large financial company when we come back. Then John, a veteran. Tom in Missouri, uh, former military, wants to give his take on the state of things. And Richard in Texas, toll road worker. I want to talk to all of you. I appreciate you holding. I, I get a lot of callers on and then... We go to break and have a guest on, and then I get the guest off early so we can get to you. We'll do one little six-minute segment, one more five-minute segment. I'll try to shut up, get to all of you when we come back uh, so that we can hear what you have to say. But then I get a great caller on earlier who was blowing the whistle with his wife working in healthcare, how they put all your data in the NSA. I actually had uh, an article here from last year, July 21st. Move over NSA. Here comes Obamacare Big Brother Database. Yeah, but that is the NSA. And the news here is it, it ties directly in to the NSA with the PRISM software. And that's come out. The comp companies use this to then interface with it. That's what they're doing. It's not, oh, PRISM spying on you. That's like saying, you know, uh, a car's running over you. No, someone else is driving it. The PRISM software is just the system to nexus it all in together. Don't forget we're listener supported. We got great 
Southern Mexican High Mountain Coffee that InfoWars has put out the best, I think, out there. So I have gotten a bunch of it and putting it out. Wake Up America Coffee, InfoWarsStore.com, the Patriot T-shirts, the great high-quality water filters discounted with promo code WATER. Uh, the Nation Iodine, unlike anything, you know, nothing like it out there. InfoWarsLife.com. I want to thank you all for your support out there. We couldn't do it without you. We'll be back. Visit InfoWars.com and PrisonPlanet.com. When you're on the site, you can also tune in 24 hours a day to my daily radio broadcast. There's also a free iPhone app to listen to the syndicated radio show when and where you want. Mm -hmm.